friends, Jennifer Pearson here at This Old Gypsy with another tarot tag. Lots of them going around right now and they're drawing me in. Um, Alright, so this one is called Spread Love, hashtag Spread Love. And not Spread Love, although that too, <laughs> but the love of spreads, tarot spreads. And this one was started by Samantha Menzo, that's the name of her channel is her name. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me, question number one, There's there are six questions here, so it's, hopefully I won't ramble too much. Um, question number one is um, the first spread that I learned, and how did you learn it? Since um, the first tarot deck that I had was the Celtic tarot, <laughs> You can imagine that the first spread was the Celtic cross. I think, though, that they had... Um, no, I think that was later. Yeah, it must have been the Celtic cross. And to be honest, I think that was one of the things that didn't work for me eventually. Of course, again, this was many years ago. Not, you know, the Internet wasn't available. Um, I didn't know that there were whole books of tarot spreads or any of that. I just had this one deck that I was working with and the guidebook that went with it. Um, I did have a book about the tarot. Um, I don't remember it having spreads in it at all. It was just information about the individual cards. So um, yes, very boring first thing. We learned it out of the book. Two. Um, have you ever created your own spread? Give examples, you know, were there themes involved? Um, absolutely, I love, I love inventing spreads. Um, certainly, if I have a conversation with somebody I'm going to be doing a reading for, uh, if, if I don't, you know, if I if I don't have something that I've used before that seems to fit their situation, I will invent positions on the spot and say, you know, is this the information you want to, to learn? Is, you know, these, this is what I want to do for you. Does this make sense for what you want to know about the situation? So, um, yes, inventing them all the time. Um, as I mentioned in another video, um, I started and then just dwindle out. Only, in fact, I only did one, and I started another one, but then didn't do a video on it. Um, I was going to do videos. I was going to do a, a, a spread for each card of the tarot. In other words, a spread, five-card spread, designed around what the meaning of that particular card, exploring what that particular card might have to, to tell us. Um, and so I did the Page of Swords, and then I had the Knight of Swords, and he, he cut me out. <laughs> um, I just got busy, is what it was, and haven't continued on that. Um, for a while there on my website, no longer, I had, um, I was trying to, um, one of my dogs was very sick, and I was trying to raise money to get medication for her. And I thought, well, it would be fun to create some spreads around my dogs, my animals. I don't think I did my cats. I think I only did dogs. Um, and I, I loved them, but that didn't seem to attract other people. <laughs> um, you know, your, your essential dog nature. Um, so anyway, so I, and there were, there were four or five of those. Maybe four of them. Um, and those were five card spreads. I had they were longer to begin with, but I I trimmed them down. They, I think they were just too much. I trimmed them down to five cards, and that was great. Um, and there are you know you know I've played with creating other things as well. I did for every phase, every weekly phase of the moon waxing, waning, full, new. I did, um, and I was doing those until recently when I had this voice problem which still isn't completely gone. Um, <clears throat> I was doing weekly videos using spreads that I created for the phases of the moon, but I may not be able to continue that. 
Um, okay, three. How many cards do you like to have in your spreads, whether for self or for others? <clears throat> and it said on average, on average. It, of course, everybody's going to say it depends. <laughs> I like nine card spreads, but even a nine card spread, I think can end up for when, when it's a, a, somebody knowledgeable about tarot or tarot readings, reading for another person who's knowledgeable about tarot and tarot readings. Um, it works, you know, to have lots of information and lots of information sort of derived intuitively you know because we already have a basic understanding and we can sort it out <clears throat> I think when it's somebody who is not familiar with tarot or has tarot readings but hasn't studied the tarot hasn't gotten into it doesn't do their own tarot readings um, that having more than five cards can actually be too much information for them. They don't know how to take it all in. Um, now, many people, of course, love the Celtic, the Celtic cross, but the Celtic cross controls that overwhelm by being pretty strict about what each position means. Um, and as, that's actually one of the things I don't like about it. I think it's very limiting and that that it has it, it gives information I couldn't care less about um, or it's kind of disjointed it doesn't all kind of fit together as a unit um, in other words it's kind of too broad or too spread out <clears throat> now having attacked the Celtic cross I will say this um, that recently I have taken the pattern of the Celtic cross and have started to use it for career readings. In other words, I've assigned, other than the central, um, you know, this is you, this is what is crossing you, um, that those, that central thing, I've kind of reassigned the meanings to all of them. And again, instead of having a Celtic cross that gives sort of shallow but broad information, it's all about the career, or it's all about prosperity, or whatever the case may be. I have a couple of them. Um, <clears throat> all right. So yeah, I think that as card readers, we need to be careful about um, giving people too much information. And I will say this, though. Like, I've started this new thing called journey reading and I'm and, it, and I don't know if this will work for people because it has the potential to give too much information with it you can have very few cards but um, I just did one for Taurus that um, I don't know when I put this video up if I will already have talked about it on um, on my channel or not but it's a doozy. <laughs> it uses 59 cards. It's 59. You know, it's like in a story. It's 59 cards, and it's like, oh my god. Um, but anyway, that isn't something I would want to do to your average individual. Um, all right, four. What is your favorite or most used spread, and where can we find it? I don't know that there's any place you can find it. Um, as well, my isn't that, that I use for me. There's one that was very popular when I used it here on my channel, doing my um, horoscope oriented general readings here, and that was one I invented based on my tarot birth card. It's the chariot, um, and I explained this in another vis video that asked about your favorite spread and. Um, the middle card is you as the charioteer, and then the wheels of the chariot, either side of things that are coming with you, either from the present or the past, and then for the two sphinxes or horses, whatever is pulling you forward, two things that are moving you forward, and then um, a card on top, so a total of six, 
about the direction you're heading in. If you continue, this is the direction. This is where you're taking yourself. Um, and that was very popular. And I, I like it. You know, it like gives enough information and yet is fairly controlled and simple. Um, I would do that for general and then I would do it for love. And, but I have to say that I haven't used it that spread very much for me. Um, I don't know. I just do a lot of variety. Like some people will say sometimes I'll just pull cards. Um, because I read kind of so often for, for myself, not every day, but um, if a situation comes up, a lot of times I'll just pull three cards and see what it says. Or I use a yes, no, if I'm trying to decide whether to do something. And in that case, the first card is kind of, is giving me the, the yes or no vibe. The <laughs> second card is a why, why no or why yes. And um, the last card is outcome if I go forward with whatever it is I want to do, regardless of whether it's saying yes or no. Um, <clears throat> so I will do that. Um, I've been using the Lenormand Grand Tableau recently, um, actually playing with it as something that's for the week in instead of the big picture. Um, I don't know, what else have I been... Oh, this journey spread that I was talking about. Oh, yes, I've been using that. Um, so this is where... And this is for ma kind of major phases, so you don't do it very often. Um, or I don't do it very often. I've done it for myself. One client... Um, I haven't heard from her yet. <laughs> it was way, way too much information. Um, and then uh, my sister. So... The, and I've been doing it here on my channel for each sign of the zodiac. I started in Pisces, I think, Pisces, Aries, and I'm about to do this this huge Taurus one. Um, but what I do is I shuffle, um, shuffle the deck normally, and then I lay out the cards um, one at a time, uh, looking for the first upright major arcana. And that first upright major arcana is considered um, the path that the person is on. You know, that's, that's your life development phase that you are at. And um, then I take that card, I put it right back in the deck, shuffle, 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 um, and then start laying out the cards. And I lay out the cards until we reach that major arcana that was selected the first time. I can use the Taurus that we just did, um, as that I just pulled for it last night, um, for an example. It's the Empress came up for them, and it came up upright. And, but when I came to the end, pulling my 59 card, <laughs> where are you, Empress, where are you, please? Um, the Empress turned up reversed, and that's okay. Um, in fact, that's an interesting thing I'm learning about this spread, is that, uh, you know, it's like, at that point, you're kind of, exiting the, they'll be exiting the Empress. They've done their Empress bit and they'll be exiting. Other ones are kind of, seem to be, when the card is upright at the very end, is kind of your path toward owning some aspect of yourself. Anyway, I'm exploring it. It's really fascinating to me. Uh, okay. Okay, so five. Have 
has there ever been a spread that didn't work for you like you hoped? Oh, I'm yes, I'm sure that they're um, that I've taken them out of books or something and tried them and thought, oh, it doesn't work. Um, obviously, the, the Celtic cross, though, so, you know, like most people, that's just kind of what I read with and, and stuff for a long time, and I kind of didn't realize it wasn't working very well for me. Um, what... I can't, I can't think of any others, because if they don't work for me, I don't remember them. Um, Alright, six. What is the best advice for beginners of tarot when it comes to spreads? I would say, you know, you might want to start with something structured um, that somebody else has created. Just don't be afraid to modify it. You know, um... Essentially, a spread is created to cue the cards to give you information that you want or need in order to resolve the situation or make a decision or get clarity or whatever the case is. So, if you assign positions, and of course you don't have to, you can just do like a nine card grid and to just read it intuitively and let things surface the way they are without assigning um, any meanings to the specific card positions. Or you can assign, like I do that with the yes, no, why, and outcome. You know, that's what I need to know <laughs> for me personally. Um, so yeah, I, I would say just don't uh, don't stress about it. Is is as you're beginning. I don't think like that nine card the nine card grid thing, the three rows of three. I don't think that would work terribly well for somebody who's just starting out. Um, you might start out with something that has to do with three cards, five cards. I really like. Um, I'm I'm getting so that I like five cards a lot. Um, and that's one in the center, one above, one below, one to the left, one to the right. That gives you enough card interaction um, to work somewhat intuitively. Um, and, and it just makes sense for combining uh, or getting information. You, know, you have some central thing, and then maybe you have a past and a present. Um, you have what's conscious and unconscious, or where you're headed, what's holding you back, or you, you know, you could switch <laughs> however you want. Um, anyway, I think they're very useful. So I, you know, I think you could, a progression, you, when you're comfortable or bored with three, move on to five. Once you feel like you've got a handle on five and kind of are getting a feel for how the cards interact with one another up and down and, and back and forth, um, and, and all of the suits represented, and whether major or minor or kind of, and all of that kind of stuff with a five card, I would say jump to the nine, fill in those corners, and and go for it. All right, that's it for spread love. Thank you, Samantha, for coming up with this um, hashtag for tarot tarot tips and tarot sharing, etc. Um, I hope it's helpful to anybody who stops by and um, listens. I hope it gives people who um, are part of my channel and maybe are not doing their own tarot some perspective on the world of tarot. Um, and I would encourage anybody who's on my channel, if you don't have a deck, get a deck. Why not? Why not? Um, yeah, I'm starting to um, kind of definitely be wooed over to um, Biddy Tarot, Bridget Tarot's, um, Bridget Tarot, <laughs> Bridget Esselmont, uh, Biddy Tarot is her website, uh, Bridget Esselmont's feeling that everybody should have a tarot deck and everybody, or Oracle, and everybody should be reading. Um, yeah. Yep. All right. All right.
calling it done. <laughs> Thanks so much. Take care. I'll be back again soon. Bye-bye.